Putain mais qu'est-ce qu'il branle les frères Bogdanov là There's a lot going on, a lot of comedy bits that really good right. It works really well in the country that I was made in. I was curious how it was going to work in this, um, in this, in this, in this, in this audience because the, the, the voice, the, the, basically the, the dialogue is very quick and we got to keep, we got to keep reading very quickly. Uh, it's just about um, these three unlikable douchebags who are generally probably going to end up in prison pretty soon. So, uh, doing unlikable things and we have to root for them or follow them for for 20 minutes. So the one thing this film really reminded me of was Fargo. So and it's not like the people in it are so incompetent. At some point, you have to start rooting for them just because they're so bad so they become likable. Because they try so hard, it's hard not to like that one. There's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit of Fargo, but a little bit of Guy Ritchie kind of movies in there, like Snatch kind of movies in there as well, like kind of that style and that kind of action tone with those kind of those, those fast-paced dialogue going on, uh, sort of the kind of the tone and style of this film. A lot of production value in this film, but these guys are just kind of hard to root for and like. I guess the tipping point for me is you know when they ran over the cop. But it's like. And then there's, there's 10 more minutes to go, but basically you're hoping, I don't know for you guys, but I was hoping for these guys to get caught in the end, but they don't get caught, they're, they're going to continue moving on. Aren't they going to die at the end? <laughs> you hope so, yeah. Well, they can't catch up to the ball. Yeah. 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 And they're friends, and they, they're in it together. Yeah. They're friends to the end. Friends to the end, exactly, yeah. So I guess that's a good way to put it, that's a nice way that they are going to die in the end, so... Yes, we'll go to the general second row. I think uh, one of the funniest things was the, the length of the, the credits at the end. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people involved in these films, man. Like they're like this is a this is a nicely this is a high production value. A lot of money put in this film. A lot of friends. A lot of favors. Yeah. The thank you. I think you were a lot of was laughing at the thank you. They they thank everybody. They thank their high school teacher. They thank their grade school teacher. Go ahead. Uh, I thought it was there was some interesting symbology, like that that dollar bill in the car hanging between them the entire time they're in the car, like very obviously right in your face. So I thought that was kind of an interesting little note that there is there is a lot of money changing hands in various ways, and also um, it was black and white for a large portion, and it broke into color. And um, I know there was there was a there definitely a choice for that, and I was wondering if anyone else caught what they thought it might have been. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna get to that in a second because it's like, but it, it also happens very unconsciously, and it's like you don't even notice it happening, and it's like there is an obvious symbol symbolism there, and it's like I think when they cross to the other side where they are true criminals is when it kind of occurs. Go ahead. Thank you. It's when they lifted the trunk, the, the hatchback of the trunk, all three of them, and looked in. It immediately went to color then. Okay. Yeah. So when, the, when they're looking at the cop, the dead, the, or the passed out or hurt cop, is that when it, that's when it happened? Yeah. It was, it was yeah. Happening. Yeah, so it's like when they when they're crossing over into into true criminal yeah. behavior yeah. in a sense, right? So then they go into color. I thought it was interesting. I think there's maybe a little corner in any of our minds that is just wondering at any given time, you know, what if we didn't care? <laughs> you know, what if, what if we didn't give a shit? Yeah. <laughs> what if we didn't get a crap about what happened? You know, any consequences? What? Not that we would pull it off necessarily. Not that we would get away with it, but. Maybe this is what it would look like. So I was interested in that. Yeah, it's an interesting point. It's like I have a lot of uh, friends who work in uh, in law enforcement and border patrol, and they say that 90% of criminals are just idiots. Like they're not the the masterminds you see in movies. They're just like dumb fucks. Like part of my French, like these guys. And it's kind of like a portrayal of like, you know, criminals, like people with criminal behavior. And there, there's some of that. You can call it sociopathic, you can call it stupidity, whatever you want to call it, there's some of that where they just don't care. Um, I actually feel like color thing might have been a uh, homage to a Wes Anderson and Bottle Rocket because um, there are a lot of similarities with, between the two films. Yeah. And Bottle Rocket actually came in um, two films. One was a black and white short and one was a color feature. Yeah. So I feel like that might have been um, a reference to that movie. Yeah. But the only difference, well, Bottle Rocket is like, the Luke Wilson character has a moral compass. He has a soul. Like he's the guy who we're rooting for. Whereas this film, there isn't a moral compass occurring. But yeah, you you are correct though with what you just said.